When I was very young, my family didn't know if my brother Thomas would ever be able to talk, read, write, or even communicate. At preschool, while other kids played with each other on the playground, he would lie down and watch the clouds go by. While other kids played with their toys, Thomas would line them all in a row or spin them. The biggest indicator to his preschool teacher that he might be on the autism spectrum was that he would wave his hand spontaneously. The biggest effect on the family was his behavior, especially in public. He would often make a scene by tantruming about little things when he didn't get his way because it was way more difficult for him to verbalize his thoughts or change his routine. He had a habit of wandering off and constantly wanting to run away. One time when he was five years old, my mom, Thomas, and I were at an event at a golf course in a fairly remote area surrounded by woods. Thomas wanted to leave the party to go exploring the whole evening, but my mom kept a close watch on him. When my mom looked away for just a moment, he disappeared. By that time, it was dark, and for 45 minutes, the entire party was looking for him. Someone was on the phone with 911, yet luckily, Thomas was found and brought back before the police were involved. Unfortunately, he didn't learn much from this, and his adventurous behavior prospered for years after. Despite his behavior, Thomas was very affectionate and loving. After his teacher talked to my parents, they decided that they would go and get Thomas tested to see if he had autism. Thomas was diagnosed with autism when he was three years old. My dad admitted to me that he and my mom were both naive and didn't know what to expect regarding Thomas' situation. They were both very worried about his future and what he would be able to do in life but they did something that was simple yet smart that let them become better parents and better people. They decided that they would not overestimate or underestimate his abilities and be content with not knowing what the future has in store. We seem to lack empathy when it comes to overestimation and underestimation. It is not a good feeling to be overestimated or underestimated, yet we do it to people purposefully and also subconsciously. When someone is overestimated, they feel excessive pressure to do something that they are not capable of doing. This causes a lot of stress, only for inevitable disappointment. While it can be satisfying to prove someone who underestimated you wrong, being and feeling like you are underestimated is a feeling that no one enjoys. It often results in a lower self-esteem and less confidence that will lead the person to believe what is said about them. After they believe what is said, they will not try, no matter how capable they may be. Instead of making assumptions about people's capabilities, I advise for you to set realistic expectations and encourage your peers, friends, family, and loved ones to do the best that they can without setting the bar too high or too low. After all, people often defy odds by overcoming underestimation or fail despite others believing so highly in them. An example of someone who was underestimated but achieved great things later in life is a woman named Temple Grandin, who I had the pleasure of hearing speak at birth year a few weeks ago. Temple Grandin was born in 1947 in Boston and, like Thomas, is high-functioning on the autism spectrum. Ever since she was a child, many people, including her own father, wanted Temple to be institutionalized. Her mother, one of very few people who saw potential in Temple, was strongly opposed to this idea, so instead she received help from a speech therapist and a nanny. In school, Temple was constantly teased for her habit of, re of repetitive speech and was expelled from her middle school for throwing a book at a student who provoked her. After her expulsion, Temple spent some time on a ranch that belonged to her stepdad's sister in Arizona. There she became fascinated with livestock, especially cows. She went to a different high school and went on to get a degree in psychology and a doctoral degree in animal science. She did not think that cows were being treated humanely before they were slaughtered, so she designed a cattle holding system that would ensure a calm and peaceful death for the cattle. Today, she is a professor at Colorado State University and an autism spokesperson. Her cattle holding design is used in half of the cattle processing facilities in the United States. While many underestimated Temple Grandin, her mother and others in her life set realistic expectations by encouraging and helping Temple Grandin through the struggles of growing up with autism, which helps shape her into the successful person that she is today. At 13 years old, Thomas has not made a significant impact on the world like Temple Grandin, but he has achieved many things that our family hoped that he would. He went from just starting to speak at three years old to winning his school spelling bee two years in a row. Like everyone, Thomas gets discouraged and hopeless sometimes, but with the help of his family and realistic expectations, he is able to overcome many of his obstacles. Not overestimating or underestimating people and setting realistic expectations may seem very simple or even easy to you but it is much more difficult than it seems. 
we overestimate or underestimate people because we like to have a direction or an understanding of what will happen in the future. It makes us more comfortable to convince ourselves that we know the capabilities of ourselves or someone else because it is scary to give your best shot and see what happens rather than setting high or low expectations. But when you do, you can help others accomplish their goals or accomplish or even accomplish your own. Thank you.